everybody. Welcome back to the Pennsylvania and Berwind. And today I've got a bit of a shorter episode for you guys, and I'll explain that a bit in just a moment. Uh, but the first thing that I want to mention here today is that the track work that you're seeing up at this location, which by the way is Mine 78 off of Pleasantville, uh, was all done during a Patreon live stream about a month ago. Uh, so if that's something that interests you, you can head over to patreon.com slash approach medium and take a look at the tiers that I have over there. And uh, I do a live stream each month for my Patreons uh, that are within the Dispatcher tier. So if that's something that interests you, you can uh, get into that. But anyway, so today we are going to be working on Mine 78. Uh, this is a little bit off of uh, the Pleasantville Secondary. I believe this is the Coal Creek Branch. I can't quite remember. Uh, but anyway, it's about a three-mile branch line that goes... Uh, comes off of the uh, Pleasantville Secondary, goes up into the mountains, up like a 3% grade, and goes up to this mine up here. Now, uh, a little bit of history, a little bit of background. Mine 78 is owned by Bethlehem Steel over in Allegheny, so most of the coal that comes out of here is actually going to go over to Bethlehem Steel in Allegheny as unit trains. And uh, I think the remainder goes up to Grafton Dock's side, if I'm not mistaken. The coal coming out of here is uh, unprocessed raw coal. Uh, I'm probably going to talk a little bit about how I know nothing or very little about uh, coal production and mining and all that sort of stuff, and that'll be kind of evident in this video, I think. Um, so the main reason that this video is a little bit shorter is because, of, you know, obviously time, it's the summertime and I'm out doing summertime things. Um, but also, this particular project sort of suffered from a bit of a lack of vision on my part. And I wanted to get up here and, and get some work done on this part of the branch because I figured, why not? It's a good place to uh, get some more track work done and get some more things uh, functional on the PNB so that, you know, I can maybe run some trains and patrons who have access to the route can also run some more trains and do a little bit more operation and that sort of thing. But overall, because I don't know a whole lot about coal mining operations, I couldn't really uh, figure out what I was going to build here. So I open up the game and I'd build for a little bit and then turn it off and then you know this sort of went on for a few weeks uh, in between uh, you know doing things outside in the summertime and camping and all that kind of stuff so anyway it took me a little bit to get this build put together and I ended up sort of going for a bit of a more simple style uh, where the coal elevator just brings coal up out of the earth and it just gets loaded into the uh, the coal hoppers here now, according to the original Pennsylvania and Berwind paperwork provided by Bill M, uh, this place can output, I think, 60 hoppers, coal hoppers a week, if I'm not mistaken. And the main like operation method or scheme here is empties in, loads out. So you'll have a PNB unit train of empty hoppers come up, go down to that stub siding, uh, the, the two tracks at the end, uh, leave the empties, and then grab the loads from the uh, three track yard or two track yard or whatever uh, and bring it back to uh, wherever it's headed. Uh, the bulk of the, uh, the switching and that kind of thing are gonna be done by some switchers, which you'll see in the cinematics at the end of this. Um, I just used the S1 switchers, but I'd like to skin up something, maybe some SW 1500s or something like that. So Bill M did provide me with some photographs uh, of the actual operation that took place in uh, on the real thing. And there is actually a mine 78 in Pennsylvania that I believe is currently operated by Norfolk Southern and it is right outside of Windbur, Pennsylvania, which of course is the area that the PNB is loosely based on or inspired by uh, in Bill M's iteration of the original. Uh, so I tried to stick as best as possible with the original track plan and uh, the, the siding lengths and everything like that. Obviously, it is not going to be perfect because there's not really an accurate way to get um, perfectly, you know, length tracks down to, uh, you know, a couple of feet or whatever. So it's it's the same track plan as the original PNB, uh, and the uh, the whole branch is the same length uh, with a similar grade structure. And I was kind of hoping to work more on the branch in this episode and get some of the scenery done on the, the branch coming up, but I just didn't get to it. And uh, rather than spending another month trying to squeeze like a little bit of inspiration out of myself, I figured I would just uh, wrap up the project with just the coal mine here, and then we'll pick things back up in another video and finish off the surrounding area. Uh, lately, I've been feeling a little bit burned out and a little uh, just stagnant, I guess. So it's been kind of hard for me to get back into the game, especially coming off a project like the North Carolina Transportation Museum where I could look at pictures of the real thing and Google Earth of the real thing and just sort of like copy essentially what was actually there. This is all coming out of my head and a few photographs so it was a little bit more difficult to, uh, to, to bring something to life here. 
Uh, and again, my whole idea with this particular scene was to do a little bit more of a backwoodsy, uh, small... I, I guess I hesitate to say small mine because 60 coal hoppers a week seems like a lot to me. That's a lot. That's a big operation as far as I'm concerned. Maybe it's not uh, in actuality, but uh, I like the idea of this being sort of a backwoodsy uh, in the mountain ridges of Pennsylvania, and that's sort of what I saw on the prototype when I was looking at it on Google Earth. Um, and again, I really didn't want to populate this area with too much density in terms of uh, buildings, uh, trucks, vehicles, or anything like that. So I'm using a lot of grasses, a lot of trees and shrubs, and uh, towards the end, some wildflowers and rocks and stuff like that to really make it feel kind of more rugged. And uh, by the time I got to the cinematics of this, it sort of felt a little bit like uh, like the gravel pit on the DBEV, which is cool. That's fine with me. I, I don't mind that look uh, or, you know, things looking a bit similar it just happens to be how I build and that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, the main takeaway from this for me was really just not having a very clear vision of the project. Laying out the track was one thing and uh, you'll kind of get glimpses of it in the background, the, the whole branch going up through the mountains. I had a very clear vision of how I want that laid out with a creek coming around and uh, some bridges and that sort of thing. But when it came to the actual industry itself, I really struggled to figure out exactly how I wanted to do it. I spent a lot of time on Google images, trying to find images of uh, like rural and rustic coal mines. And uh, I've got that Model Railroaders book, the Model Railroaders Guide to Coal Mines or something like that, coal railroading. And I spent some time flipping through that, but I really couldn't find anything that that really uh, tickled me to uh, to want to copy or build. So um, really, I, I kind of just just winged it. I, I totally just riffed on this one. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. While I was doing it, I wasn't really loving it. But um, by the time I finished it and got the cinematic shot, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, which is never a bad thing. It's, it's lacking some detail, but I'll come back and revisit that another time when I'm feeling a little bit more inspired to uh, to work on a project like this. Uh, so that being said, um, this is sort of a big jump. We were previously working in the Highland area, and coming down here to the to Mine 78 is like the other side of the map. And uh, I don't really know why I decided to do that. It just seemed like a good change of pace. Uh, so I will have to go back up to Highland, and uh, we'll, we we still have to add a uh, candy shop. I can't remember the name of it is um, a a. Um, Man, I, my brain is not working. Uh, a, a recycling facility, like a scrapyard, and uh, something else. I think like a, an intermodal type facility. I'm thinking maybe just like a trucking facility or something, team track, something along those lines. So there's still a lot of work to be done up in Highland, and obviously there's a tremendous amount of work to to be done elsewhere on the PNB. And uh, as I stated at the beginning of this episode, I'm probably going to be doing some of that work during some Patreon live streams. We do that once a month, the first Wednesday of the month every month unless that first Wednesday falls on the first then it, it's the following Wednesday uh, but anyway so a lot of that will probably be done during then um, as well as uh, some other videos that I'm gonna try to squeeze in here and there uh, my goal really was to try to get the PNB done by the end of this year but it's not it, I really don't think it's gonna happen because I need a little bit of a break I need a little bit of a time away from uh, from building and you know to sort of get my inspiration back and I'm also going to be starting a new job next week, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. Actually, probably by the time you're watching this video, I might be back at work full time. So that's obviously going to have an effect on the amount of time that I can put into this project and that sort of thing. But anyway, back to what I'm doing here. I had initially laid out uh, some bit, pretty basic terraforming uh, at the beginning of the episode and added some landmass here and there. And as I'm building, I'm trying to add some more high areas and low areas and areas of, uh, I don't wanna really call them meadowlands, but that's sort of what I'm doing here. These uh, areas where there's not a whole lot of trees, but there's a lot of low-lying vegetation, like the grass splines and shrubs and some small growth and that sort of thing. And I've been really sort of like liking that look in this area with lots of spline grass kind of covering a lot of area and going underneath the trees um, and into the pine woods. And I know that there's really actually not a whole lot of pine trees in this part of Pennsylvania, but I like the look of it and uh, it works for me and I might, you know, scale it back a little bit, but, you know, in terms of the tree variety that we have in, in the game that actually looks good and are functional, uh, it, it adds some contrast to the otherwise, you know, what would it be, deciduous trees or whatever, like the oaks and the maples and stuff like that. So it adds a little bit of variety in terms of height and shape and I like that better than I like trying to uh, keep this exactly prototypical uh, in, in that regard. So again, like I said, I'm trying to bring in some 
uh, some variations in the in the terrain and the terraforming. So I've raised some areas up. I've lowered some areas. Uh, I'm going to begin to introduce some rocks and some some shrubs and flowers. I think in the next clip. And overall, I've just really been liking this sort of uh, undergrowth vibe. Like I could probably bring in some more variety in terms of the grass uh, splines and stuff like that. But uh, overall, it's pretty cool. So yeah, you can see at this point, I'm raising the terrain back here. And I'm kind of just trying to create a bit of a backdrop. Like I'll figure out the rest of the background, the, the background mountains as time goes on. But I really wanted to get the terrain nearest to the track to look the way that I wanted. And I'm using different size radius uh, terrain marquees, I guess you'd call it, uh, big ones and smaller ones, and I'm going up and I'm going down, and I'm not worrying too much about how consistent it looks. Uh, I just want some contrast, and, uh, you know, I can bring in some shrubs and, and grasses and stuff like that to break it up if it's a little bit too dramatic. Um, but to have a little bit of a rolling hillside so this whole area is not totally flat is very important in my opinion. And in fact, it could probably be less flat than I, than I currently have it, so I, I might even go back and add some more terraforming. Um, but, you know, everything on the P&B is up for uh, change at any at any given time. Uh, so it, it really always varies and depends on how I'm feeling when I work on a build, uh, what it's going to look like. Obviously, there's some general themes that I tend to stick with because that's just my building style. Um, but uh, yeah, so here I'm bringing in some of these dead trees, the RMM dead trees. I thought that might be a nice touch to, again, add a little bit more visual contrast to uh, to these scenes. And uh, here we go with some of the JR rocks. And one thing, I've been working on the Paint Creek branch because I didn't finish that, so I've been doing that kind of off camera and during some Patreon hangouts and stuff like that. And I've been using a lot of these JR rocks and uh, some wildflowers and just sort of piling them, piling them up in, in the woods and kind of creating some various rubble piles. And uh, in, the, in the Adirondacks, we call them erratics where there's these boulders that were pretty much left behind from the last ice age. You know, they just sort of got tumbled around, and when the ice melted, they just sort of were just sitting around. Or, you know, scraped off uh, from the terrain when the, the glacier went over top. Anyway, that's sort of a weird uh, way of explaining what I'm trying to achieve here, but that's that's what they're called. They're called erratics, and uh, they're just boulders that are sort of strewn about. And uh, I think it really brings a lot of life to the place uh, just to have some... I guess, like, I don't, it's going to sound stupid, but some lumpiness <laughs> to the terrain. Uh, so here I'm on the Paint Creek branch, just trying to look for some assets that I was using. Uh, and I'm trying to grab them, but the game is being really stubborn and not allowing me to grab the assets that I wanted. Um, but you can get kind of an idea of uh, what that was looking like. And I'm trying to, you know, keep a little bit of consistency to the build and to the assets that I use. And I've been really liking these JVC wildflowers. I'm using, I think, 15 and 18 on here, which is a yellow and a purple. And they just look really good together. And they look really good sort of cropped up around these rocks. And even if it's not for the color, the, the contrast and the variety of the, the green and the texture of the leaves themselves adds a lot of visual appeal and uh, diversity to the area. And I think that that's really important. Maybe I went a little bit crazy and spammed a little bit too much. I don't know, it's it's tough to know when you're getting carried away and you're just spamming stuff, or if you're really putting thought into what you're doing. Um, so again, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to bring in some more of these rocks and not make sure that I'm not spending too much time on one side of the track and not the other. Uh, so lastly here, I've got to add in the frogs and, uh, and our, our uh, switch machines. Um, and somebody had mentioned to me that I've been adding these frogs backwards for the longest time, so now I actually understand how to do it. The left and the right side are actually if you're facing the diverging tracks and not if you're facing the points. Uh, so lastly, I'm bringing in these new Century Switch Stands, which I, I just love to use. And uh, I'm trying to set the, uh, the direction for the, the points to just be straight and not on their diverging route. And apparently that is saved to the session layer, at least as of lately, and not the route layer. I found that out when I started to record the cinematics. And here we are at the cinematics. So that is going to do it for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that it's been a long time since my last videos. Uh, and that's just how life works these days. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'm looking forward to producing some more for you guys in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.